Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the off season coming off of an 18 and 14 season with Long Beach. It was our best season we've had probably so far, even better than season one where we made the conference championship. We actually won the conference championship and made the NCAA tournament ended up losing in the first round but that season we kind of had an easier schedule easier conference but I think now we started to take the leap to make at least a little bit of noise around the NCAA now looking at players leaving Baz Helcott, I'm going to miss him in the middle he has been a force down there average over a block a game great rebounder an awesome leader in the middle along with a guard JD Joyner now JD Joyner He's been interesting in his career because he was a guy that I had in the starting lineup to start this series, but then it kind of started to make it so that we had to bring him off the bench, and that was actually a necessity more than, you know, him being outbeaten by other guys, by younger guys. But now we're going to miss him because I think the big issue with our bench was that we didn't have anybody to really get us a bucket when we needed a bucket and really to set up baskets that other guys couldn't do when Zane Storm was off the floor. So Zion Storm, I should say. But now we have to kind of look at that in recruiting. Now, looking at our first recruit we had in the regular season, Brian Vincent, he comes in actually. I looked at his stats here, 18.5, four blocks, five rebounds, three assists. I mean, he can do it all. So we're going to have a pretty good forward going into our lineup next year. And we do have a hole there. Baz Helcott is leaving. So I think that William Caesar will be the starting center. So I'll have to see what he and uh, Kayshawn Cooper can do. They, they'll, I think those two are going to fill in for Baz Helcott. Blaine actually was pretty good, but he couldn't really score too much. He was there for defensive purposes. So we're going to have to see. I think those three will kind of rotate in at center. And I think William Caesar at six foot seven is going to play center quite a bit because of his defensive ability. But right now, we don't really know. So let's look into the offseason recruiting here. Now, I decided to go after some higher four star prospects that weren't interested. The first was Kevin York. He's a pretty good player. Number 120 in the league, number 20 as a small forward. And then we decided to go after Gary Manning as well. Now, these are long shot plays. These guys are not interested in us at all, but I decided to go after them because we have two scholarships left. Why not just try to do a Hail Mary, get one of these guys? But the one guy I wanted here was Chucky Warren. And the big reason why is because he is a top 100 player, number 88 in the NCAA as far as recruiting goes. And I want to see what I can do if I go all in with him. Now, Gary Manning didn't end up being as good as what I thought, but Chucky Warren ended up being amazing. His top school is Gonzaga, so this is kind of a uh, bittersweet type of recruit here because we're taking him away from a top school possibly and a rival school of ours. And also, he shoots 58% from three. That is just ridiculous coming out of high school. We haven't seen anybody shoot that percentage as a incoming freshman. So I'm definitely going to go all in for Chucky Warren. But we do need to settle down and get one of the guys that is interested in our school. Ethan Owen is the first. He is a very good point guard, and he can also play make as well. I wish his three-point ability was a little bit higher because his three-point shooting is just above 30%. Then there's Kevin Booker, who is a good forward. And there's not a lot of forwards who shoot 20% from three. So in this game, they usually shoot about like 10%, 12%. He shoots 20. So that's a big, big sign that he could be a better shooter than what we initially thought. And then looking at Cyrell Teal, I think that this guy is pretty good. Averaging nine points, nine assists. And that's what I want. I want a guy that's going to be able to pass and set up other guys off of the bench. That kind of shows me that he can run the floor as well. So he will get the first scholarship of guys that are interested in our school. Warren has the other right now, but with two remaining, we're only going to offer two because once you run out, you just run out. You can't recruit anymore. So we advance on and Cyril Teal does commit. So we have our second recruit. Now one scholarship left. And I just need to go all in on Chucky Warren. He is everything that a recruit would want. You would want a recruit to be. And number 88, I mean, that this would be huge for our program. Seeing that we can land a top 100 recruit 
that would make waves in recruiting going into next season as well. And I'm just going to go all in to try to steal him away from Gonzaga. We throw the assistant coach at him, the head coach visit, the unofficial school visit. I thought we offered him a scholarship in the last round, but I guess that didn't go through. So we advance on again, and not much has changed. He's still interested in Gonzaga, but has not committed to them. But he doesn't like any of our pitches at all. And this is kind of alarming, to be honest. And maybe we should back off of him and start focusing on other guys because it doesn't look like he's coming to our school but we'll try one last time let's just see if we can move the needle the interest was very low now at least the interest is just low but then i decide to look back at the other guys i need to be safe and need to make sure that we do use this last scholarship to at least get one of these guys and i'm just looking at mathis booker and and we already have teal and owens and out of those three guys I think I like Booker the most because shooting 20% as a small forward in this game is kind of unheard of. And at six foot seven, he can play the four. He can also play the two if we need to really get some length on the floor. So we decide to commit to Booker and he accepts the scholarship. So we now have all three used and Chucky Warren actually went through that whole process and did not accept the scholarship. I'm not sure what his plan ended up being but I guess he just won't play. I'll have to check to see what team he committed to, but he was not on Gonzaga after checking, uh, recruiting after recruiting and seeing what happened. So we do rename these top recruits to our members on the channel. They get first dibs, and since it's only like a 15-man roster, they pretty much own the entire roster, and then I rename everybody else that submits a recruit, subscribers, to guys in the conference. So then we have first... Uh, Taylor, who's going to be a very, very good big. And right now, he's slated to be the top overall guy on the team. But the guy I'm most excited for is James Quick. If you just look at his ratings right now, he's not the best of shooters, but he can rebound as a three. He's actually be a better defensive rebounder than William Caesar and Taylor that's above him. Also, he can score on the inside. This is different from what we've had. I tried to make Spratly have this role, and he's been doing good, but not great. I'm looking for a guy that can really play point guard as a, uh, I guess, a point forward. And really, I think Quick can fit that mold pretty well. That will also give us an opportunity to at least give Zion Storm some rest. And Michael Workman, Workman will come in off of the bench and be an awesome impact freshman. So for the first time in this series, we finally get an invitation to a preseason or a midseason tournament. We will be going to Puerto Rico for the Puerto Rico tip off. Finally, we get one of those. It's pretty hard to get one of those if you're a bad team. And I think that now we're starting to get noticed at a B minus overall now, starting to get the respect. You can just see the review that the NCAA is writing for us. Extremely mature team. I think this could be our year to really rise in the West Coast Conference. Now, our schedule, I usually like to make it pretty tough but also have some teams on there that we can at least beat and improve our non-conference record, at least to get some points in the RPI. So we will be facing two Pac-10 teams. It's really the Pac-10 back there. Now it's the Pac-12. And Oregon and Washington State will open up the season, then UMBC. Then we will have an episode dedicated to that preseason tournament. We will start out by playing Lafayette in the first round. I'm not sure how many rounds that tournament will be, but at least we know we are in a preseason tournament, which I'm really, really excited for. And then we kind of finished out non-conference play with a couple of mix, a mix of a couple of good teams and some okay teams and a couple of bad teams. Also, we get our rematch with Michigan as well. I wanted to play that game. And remember, other teams have to accept your invitation to play them, so you can't just schedule who you want. But our strength to schedule this year is three stars. That's actually very, very good. We usually have maybe a one star or a two star schedule. So I definitely decided to make it a little bit tougher while we got better as well. And we're getting respect. I mean, we need to play the tough teams now. And pretty soon we're gonna be able to schedule ranked teams in non-conference play. It hasn't happened yet. Last year, we got lucky with Michigan because that was already preseason scheduled. But this year, we don't have any except for Gonzaga, who is number 23 in the nation. Now, training is pretty much going to go just as usual. 
I kind of like to do with our backcourt, focus on shooting and offense, and then our front court with defense, rebounding, and conditioning. And then our player focus is going to be 50-50 starters and reserves. So after training, William Caesar is a 72 overall, pretty good offensive rebounder, very good at blocking shots, coming off of a 9.4, 9.3 rebound per game season in his freshman year. Very, very good. And he averaged 1.7 blocks. He's going to definitely need to be our big man, that, big man that really plays defense because Douglas Taylor is good, not great on defense. But we already went over his rating, so we won't, won't get into it too much. Now, James Quick is going to play a huge role because, like I said, when I need to give Zion Storm a break, Quick might be the point guard that might be running the unit, also with Workman coming off the bench. And Tamir Macklin will have to be our three-point shooter this year because Joyner has graduated and has moved on. So he will need to assume that three-point marksman role and really just assert himself as one of the best shooters in the conference. Now, Tony Monsetti, I want to talk about Tony Monsetti a little bit because just looking at him, he averaged a pretty good number last season, and he averaged about eight points per game. But look at the three this year. It goes up to 76. That is a huge improvement. Now, that is a nine-point improvement from last season after training. I'm excited about that because I was very, very hesitant to play Tony Monsetti last year. When I was playing, he played a lot in sim situations, but when I was playing, he couldn't knock down three, so I couldn't really play him. This year, he will have a chance to get big minutes when we do play and also be in the starting lineup. You never know what's going to happen with our starting lineup as the season goes on. Kayshawn Cooper is going to be a very good big man off the bench. I think he's going to get big minutes ahead of Blaine Ashley, who actually had a really good season last year, 2.4, but 6.7 rebounds. Per game, So that is a big change for us as we do rotate in Kayshawn Cooper and really just make up for Baz Helcott leaving. Ronnie Madoki played some defensive, minute la defensive minutes last year, but he's more of a defensive guy. If I need somebody to come in and kind of lock down their best big man, you know Madoki's going to get that playing time. Contavia Morgan is actually li listed as the 11th man off the bench, but he's actually the second guard. So he's going to play quite a bit. And Joseph Spratley kind of takes a back seat this year because of the forwards we have on the team right now. But Spratley will get the playing time. Anytime I'm playing, I love Spratley. He plays good defense. He also can run in transition. He will play some big minutes for us this year. So that's going to do it here for the offseason. This is the last year of the original walk-on team. So we're going to need to do something big this year. I'm hoping that we do finally capture that conference title here in the west coast conference because it's now our third season here and if we don't make the ncw tournament nit is our goal but i want the ncw tournament as a goal i want single digit losses as our goal as well i think that's very very achievable for this team so hit subscribe hit that like button season four coming up soon so stay tuned let's get it let's go I've been working hard for a minute The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention It don't matter though, yeah And it don't even matter though, nope Hey, it don't even matter